Right. Thank you, colleagues, and welcome to uh, what will be the first in a series of uh, Thursday virtual bridge events that we run in conjunction with CDN. Um, today's event is going to be recorded as they, they normally are, and the presentation will be led by my colleague Janet Campbell. Um, what we will be doing is making it available as all the virtual bridge events are. Um, we'll be making the presentation element of the event available uh, for anyone to, to view after. Um, after the half hour ish period uh, of presentation, uh, we'll go into discussion and, and sharing of experience. Uh, that part won't be recorded, um, but will be useful for us to hear uh, how everyone else is working and, and what's working well. During the process, I'll keep an eye on the chat box. If you have any particular questions, if you just type them in, and if it makes sense, we will pause the presentation to pick those up, uh, or we may hold some of those points uh, to the end. Uh, Janet, can I invite you to go on and, and share your screen? Janet's PowerPoint, I think, is also going to be available, Kenji. Can I just confirm that? Yeah, uh, to anyone who, who would want it after the event uh, through the CDN website. Um, and our intention would be to try and ensure uh, that we cover as much as we can in the limited time. Um, and the, the main things that Janet will feature is really what we already have uh, that might be useful in planning evaluation, um, what new resources might be of some support, and to try and draw out from you the experiences that you have of evaluating the distance, the blended, uh, the technology supported learning uh, that we're having to deliver. Um, I have the current pleasure of, uh, which many of us will have, of being in tier four. And tier four is going to make life even more challenging in terms of the use of technology and, and distance presentation. Um, so we'll look forward to I think a quite extended period where this is a type of work that we want to be confident about, we want to evaluate and we want in year to be able to try and uh, improve. Um, we don't yet have your presentation on screen, Janet. So I'll give you- Oh, a... I've got it here. Uh, All mm. right. Okay, thanks and, and apologies for the technology. Um, so my name is Janet Campbell, part of the Post 16 team in Education Scotland. It's good to see so many uh, people on the call this morning, so I hope you find the session useful. Um, I am the college at Chamai at the moment for uh, Fife College and Edinburgh College, but I've been the uh, college at Chamai for a variety of colleges over the years. Um, so I probably know quite a few people on the on the call. And um, so my plan would be to talk through a, a few slides, quite a few slides, in fact, and they will be available for reference uh, in the recorded ver version. Uh, and then there will be plenty of time for um, questions at the end. I don't think um, it will be, uh, it will take me half an hour. So next slide, please, Kenji. Um, so the objectives for the session, we thought that uh, we would start by a, an intention to build confidence uh, with colleagues, um, reference the stuff that is already available from Education Scotland, so the, what should be the well-known how good is our college framework, some reference to the recent support materials, our best future, and then just scratching the surface of some of the research that's around that might be useful. And then, as I say, um, allowing time for questions on some reflection on what's been discussed. Okay, moving on. I uh, just want to remind you what how good as our college actually looks like. That should be well dog-eared and well used and covered in coffee stains or might well be gathering dust or might well be lost in your electronic file somewhere. So um, Education Scotland hasn't created a, a new framework yet. We are looking at the arrangements and the framework is part of that review. But at the moment, this is still the framework we would expect colleges to be referencing. Um, so it's time perhaps to dust it down. Next slide. I've um, reproduced the particular quality indicator that if you're talking about reflecting on blended learning and teaching. Um, 2.3 in our framework is for any learning and teaching, in fact. And if you look at the challenge questions that are uh, listed in the framework, and they've been around for a while and 
staff and colleges should be well familiar with them. These questions are as relevant as they are for classroom teaching, and they can easily be translated for uh, blended teaching or online learning. Um, you will, will notice that a couple of his questions actually mention digital technologies, so we, we may well have been trying to future-proof, but who would have known that we would be dealing with a pandem pandemic at this point in time? Moving on. I've given you the link there, just in case you've lost how good is our college. Um, and what we would be uh, suggesting, although Education Scotland have said they will not carry out scrutiny this year, um, and it's a year where we are going to support colleges to recover and get through pandemic and, and all that's associated with that. We are still expecting colleges to continue with their cycle of reflection and improvement, self-evaluation generally. Uh, and there may be a silver lining to the situation that we're now presented with, with so much online learning and uh, increased use of technology. Some plans that were in college plans uh, for several years and, and perhaps were uh, deemed to be more iterative, and more of a, a progress to blended learning. Some of that development that might have taken a bit longer has been forced upon colleges, but it may then work to advantage in, in the steady state as we get through the pandemic. Next slide. Um, I also wanted to highlight, because there are quite a few managers on the call, and um, the 2.3 is the nitty gritty of the learning and teaching process, we are highlighting that while there are lots of interrelationships across our framework, just want to refresh memories that there are uh, particular leadership quality indicators, and I've highlighted the three particular uh, quality indicators here where um, what happens in terms of learning and teaching, and that would include blended learning and teaching, um, these leadership quality indicators are still your point of reference, which we would expect to see embedded in your reflection and evaluation of, of learning and teaching. Moving on. Um, I also wanted to highlight to colleagues, and, and maybe some people on the call are not aware, aware of, um, a substantial package of resources that Education Scotland made available to the sector fairly recently. Um, they're in four um, tranches, if you like, four themes, and these themes were um, created because we recognised that these were areas where because of the emergency situation and the um, uh, pandemic that we were dealing with, that colleges may want a more in-depth or deep dive, if you like, into um, these four particular areas that may be the most affected by the current situation. I've also included the um, link there, the hyperlink to um, get these uh, resources. Um, again, the um, the distribution probably went to one person in the college and may not have reached everybody who's on the call today, um, but it's worth having a look uh, at the, the materials and uh, there may be something there that could add to your um, reflection and your evaluation as you move forward. Next slide, please. I've chosen one particular um, QI or, or sorry, theme um, from Our Best Future. Um, it is worth saying that Our Best Future has got very much COVID-19 as the kind of um, common thread, but we are suggesting that a lot of the additional questions that appear within Our Best Future, all of the areas, all of the themes, uh, will be useful as you progress through to steady state. We will get through this pandemic, um, and we will be in a position where uh, we won't have resorted back to um, classroom teaching necessarily. There is likely to be continue to be a blend uh, operating in, in most colleges, as John was saying, the tier four situation that we're dealing with just now shows that you know things may take some time to um, pan out to a steady state. But the suggestion is that we won't ever really go back to 
totally classroom teaching, that's not uh, looking likely. And I've chosen one of the particular questions that are under the theme of uh, planning and delivery in the Our Best Future materials. And you'll see it's about ensuring that um, the digital resources are available for staff and learners. So that's an additional question which would um, take the current circumstances into account alongside your other um, how good is our college questions. Moving on. I also wanted to highlight that, again, in terms of building confidence, there are still the same measures of success and uh, retention. PIs generally, the funding council still want uh, submissions of data under the uh, measures that they've had in the past. They may generate some additional measures, but they are still the key uh, PIs that we will be considering. Um, however, what we're now um, highlighting is that with the um, amount of blended learning or online learning, remote learning that is happening, you've now got a plethora of other what we're calling learning analytics that can add to these PI measures and actually give you quite a lot of um, information that perhaps it starts to give you an idea of a broader experience for learners uh, and a lot more data to, um, to analyze. Um, the technology and flexibility that we're, we have in the um, system just now in the sector seems to be making retention and um, monitoring retention a bit easier. And in fact, the figures for retention are holding up quite well from what we're hearing from colleges. Um, so we hope that is reality rather than perhaps just, um, you know, the, the system telling us a story. And I've highlighted a JISC um, link there um, where the use of learning analytics or the services that just can offer colleges to make the most of their data and the analysis of, of data um, is worth having a look at. There's some guidance here which might be quite useful. Moving on. Um, I just wanted to highlight that colleges um, are actually quite good at um, collecting data um, colleges have put a lot of effort into staff dashboards and um, managing information uh, much better than, than ever before, really. Um, and we're now seeing that there may be much more potential to focus in on individuals um, and identify um, ends of the spectrum, really, where um, struggling learners or those that are doing particularly well can be identified. Um, colleges had made quite a bit of progress in terms of being a bit more predictive about how their successes or grades or progression might look. And uh, what we're saying is now with this uh, much richer set of data, that may be able to be um, even uh, more substantial. Moving on. I just wanted to give you some examples of um, measures or analytics that could be useful if you're looking for trends and some instant feedback, in fact, so you don't need to wait um, for a term to pass before you analyse or look at the numbers. And so things like um, the time that learners um, uh, are on, on the um, materials or looking at the materials and you know if if learners prefer late at night or early morning or whatever there is the flexibility but it will also allow you to see where the popular times are for engaging with the online um, learning also things like which resources are well used and which are not so well used and also some instant feedback about how your assessments are working, uh, whether it's formative or summative assessment. Um, there may be times when um, learners have most difficulty, so this may be at certain points in the year, certain points in the day, days of the week and so on, and all that analysis becomes um, possible when you've got the data um, that uh, is being generated. And obviously something like late submissions can also be quite a real indicator of risk that may be involved if you're not seeing students in a face-to-face -face, um, situation. Moving on. 
Um, I highlighted here the some questions about or some uh, considerations about pedagogy. Um, it would be fair to say that most uh, teaching staff in colleges will have done their um, teacher training, basic training, whatever, um, around a situation where technology would be an added bonus to classroom based learning. Um, so the emphasis in most uh, teacher training would be around um, uh, using technology as a, an added extra. Um, it would also be around assuming that assessment and support was available in a campus-based situation. So all of that is now not the case. And so what we're saying is that um, colleges uh, have turned their attention to um, perhaps more about technology being used well for uh, learning and teaching rather than just the um, the resources working or the nuts and bolts of the technology or the um, the, the functions of the applications or whatever um, much more focus on uh, using technology well in in learning and so colleges have been very busy and the summer period was taken up with a substantial amount of CLPL for um, uh, teaching staff and also quite individual programmes because obviously teaching staff are coming at uh, are coming to technology at different levels. Some are very comfortable with it and others are um, perhaps uh, needing more support. Moving on. I wanted to highlight as well some um, questions that colleges or, or managers should be asking in terms of the induction process. When um, we were in the March situation where the emergency remote teaching became the sudden requirement, um, there had been quite a bit of gelling of groups and you know staff knew uh, learners very well and uh, moving to the emergency situation perhaps didn't have as many of the um, requirements, if you like, around or the opportunity to check the requirements around these uh, questions that I've highlighted here. So now we're into more of a planned situation beyond the emergency um, delivery situation. We're focusing in on these um, questions uh, where uh, we're suggesting that learners need to be prepared well in advance if their experience is going to have a majority of online or remote learning. I've been interested to hear some discussions in colleges where um, the um, students have been reluctant to switch on their cameras and some colleges have actually built that into their learner charter or learner um, commitment or or whatever and so as a result of not using their cameras if they signed that commitment then perhaps they're uh, breaking the disciplinary code but um, I think the feedback from some uh, learners had been that they didn't even know that um, they had signed for that so there's something about making sure that uh, learners are happy to switch on their cameras it may be about the environment that they're operating in it may be that they're having to share their technology or whatever uh, and of course there's also that thing about learners tuning in happy with their cameras on but being in their pajamas which is perhaps not the 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 best way so perhaps within any student code there should be something about being dressed appropriately or whatever the link that i've put on that slide is actually um, tips for learners and it's from the british psychological society i think the the uh, organization is um, called and that is quite a simple checklist which um is for um, for learners and, and talks about things like making notes effectively, set goals early, work on concentration, get socialising, start later if you need to and get enough sleep. So there's very practical, easy checklist of, of things that um, learners should be made aware of. So the induction process is likely have, to have been very different as students began in August this year. 
it's also likely to be quite different in, in January next year when you have in many colleges January starts and colleges are, are busy reflecting on their experiences so far and tweaking their arrangements to suit uh, going forward and we'd actively encourage you to do that. Next slide, Kenji. So in terms of this slide, what we're emphasizing is that, as I mentioned before, we are uh, talking about a recovery year for colleges, so Education Scotland not uh, carrying out scrutiny, but we are still expecting self-evaluation activities to be running um, throughout the year in colleges, much as they have done in the past. There may be a need for a bit of reflection back to the March air emergency remote teaching situation where in some colleges a lot of materials needed to be made available very quickly and so there may need to be some um, reflection backwards to that um, situation or that material that is still uh, around and just make sure that all your checks and balances and quality uh, rigour has still um, been implemented in terms of uh, access and inclusion, um, safeguarding, learning types and so on. So, so there may need to be a wee bit of a look back. The other point that I've highlighted here is um, to make sure that there are some points where, although the um, majority of the delivery may be online or remote, that there are some check-ins, some physical check-ins, uh, even if you are seeing learners with their pyjamas on or whatever, um, that there are so, still some scheduled uh, slots and maybe a variety of these scheduled slots to make sure that um, they do suit uh, individual personal circumstances. And as I've mentioned already, an increasing focus on um, the learning analytics, the, the, the strains, issues and trends that you can now um, generate and, and perhaps some of the numbers and the analysis that can um, help to support your evaluation of how well the, the blended learning is, is going. Moving on. Um, yeah, we, we advertised this or I said in my opening slide that we would give you some links to uh, research. I should say, like the BBC, other links and research is available. Um, this is really my personal selection of, of five that I've, I've used um, when I've done other work. And from the links there, you can see um, the theme of each of the, um, the very different organizations. But the first one is there, is the difference between that emergency remote teaching and the actual online learning, which we should be seeing now in a more managed and a more structured way. Um, I would say that some of the research that's around is um, HE orientated because obviously there was a, a bigger move to online learning perhaps sooner than, than colleges, um, but still um, universities being taken by surprise as well in terms of this current pandemic situation. The second link there is actually quite a useful blog which was generated by Ofsted and a selection of um, I think it was 20 volunteer colleges and other providers and because it's done in the form of a blog uh, there is the opportunity for others to comment and I think there's been one or two comments made around uh, the findings from it was actually June 2020 this year so it was a very early um, uh, sense of, of how things were going. Um, the other, um, let's say, uh, the other two that I've, I've added from the GISC point of view, um, again, a, a very useful, I think it's September 2020, um, the Learner Digital Experience Insights Survey, and that's a UK-wide um, look at further education. And there's actually some useful stuff there where the questions were um, uh, very pertinent around assistive technology and some of the um, uh, personal preferences that uh, learners identified in terms of their uh, experience so far. 
And then the last um, link there is, um, has been around for a wee while, the GIST Guide to Designing Learning and Assessment. Now, this session today is about reflecting on the delivery, but if you were going back to the basics of how the um, programme of delivery or the materials should be structured, that would be a, a useful link. Um, so um, GISC is, is certainly a, a good source of information. I think I'm nearly there and I think I've probably used um, most of my half hour. Um, so the next slide, I think, is the discussion questions. Um, and <clears throat> perhaps um, this is where we stop recording. I don't know if that's the case, Kenji, is it? Yep, I think we can say at this stage that the presentation has been an excellent and well-timed presentation, Janet. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, and we do now move on to the discussion phase. There's been some discussion already in the, the chat area, but there are some points that we would want to pick up in discussion. And if we can, um, I suppose, pick up those points as a starting point for discussion to share any good experiences or any concerns that colleagues have. But we can end the recording there. Thank you.